Welcome to the event report for Clash of the Bots 2017. This was a robot combat event held in Gastonia, North Carolina on June 24th. And I brought three robots to compete. My 150 gram bot, Little Demon. My three pound bot, Demon Spawn. And my hockey bot, F13. I was originally going to bring an ant weight as well, but I kind of ran out of time both to build it and I realized that if any of these robots did well, I would probably have a hard time maintaining all four over the course of the day. Spoiler alert, it didn't really end up being a problem, but we'll get into that as we look at the individual robots. First up, we're going to take a look at Little Demon, my 150 gram robot. Internally, this robot is exactly the same as the previous incarnation. All the same motors, batteries, weapon blade, all that good stuff. But externally, I did decide to change it up a little bit. I was having issues at my previous event where I realized that I kind of needed a better feeder wedge to go into the blade because I was just having trouble with any robot that didn't have nice flat sides for me to latch onto. So the new frame was 3D printed. Unfortunately, I only got to build one version of it. I didn't get to make spares or prototypes of other designs. I ended up actually having to go and just really tear this frame apart to make weight. I ended up taking a big section out of the front here and the extra weapon mount kind of had to be removed. And this whole print is actually pretty bad. It's pretty warped there at the bottom, but it's what I had. It's what I can move forward with. In my first fight, and actually only fight was against a robot called Spicy Boy, was a 150 gram wedge, and I was doing decent. I couldn't get under his wedge. Unfortunately, my little wedgelets still weren't good enough because of the bad print quality, but I was able to get onto the sides and hit him and do a little damage and all that good stuff. But at some point I got flipped upside down and the robot just stopped working. Once I got the robot back to the pits, I found out that a solder joint inside of my battery had actually broken apart and basically caused me to lose power. Power. It was the only battery I had that worked for this robot because the other one had actually gotten drained so low at the last event that it no longer would take a charge. And in my attempts to repair this battery, it actually ended up shorting and starting to puff up and leading me to run across the pits to go dump it in a safe location because it was on the verge of catching fire, I think. So that ended up being it for Little Demon. Just the one fight where I kind of just stopped working halfway through and then I was unable to repair it to go further. So I think I'm going to try to improve this basic design. I'm gonna reprint the frame where I don't have to chop off all the pieces. I'm working on getting the printer so it will print a little more evenly so I won't have the weird curling effects there in the corners. And I think I'll give this thing a real shot at the next event and see how it works. Next up was my three pound beetle weight. Demon Spawn, and this was the one I was really excited about. If you saw my last event report, you know that version of Demon Spawn, the first version of Demon Spawn that competed, wasn't really my vision for that robot. It was really a very compromised bot. This one actually got built way in advance of the event, and I thought it was looking pretty good. I changed the design completely to be kind of more of a standard vertical spinner for this day and age with a feeder wedge, similar to Little Demon. But I was pretty happy with how the robot turned out as a whole. Of course, my first fight ends up being against the kind of robot I don't want to face with Demon Spawn, which is a very, very solid wedge, and this one being called the one you were about to lose to. But that fight was going okay for a little while. He was able to get under me and throw me around the arena, but I was also able to get around to the sides of him and throw him up in the air pretty damn high. I actually had to check some other clips online because I couldn't tell from my video. I thought I actually got him up to the ceiling at one point, but I didn't quite make it there. That's still my goal with this robot, to get something to bounce off the ceiling of an arena. If nothing else, I'll just bring it to Dragon Con where the arena is like two feet tall and I can easily do that. But I got some really good hits in. I felt like I was doing pretty damn well in the fight. My driving was a little screwed up. I think between the way the wedge was shaped and the fact that the arena floor isn't really smooth, I was just having some kind of weird bouncing issues trying to get the bot to move across the floor. But eventually, after the largest of the hits, Demon Spawn just stopped working. It felt exactly like Little Demon and I eventually found out that it was basically the same cause. The battery wires that basically run along here had popped out and my blade had caught them and basically cut its own power cable, which that really sucks. And I ended up adding a lot of tape for the second fight just so I could probably not do that again. The other thing that happened, and ignore the way the tooth looks right now, but I actually did shear one of the bolts going through holding the tooth in place and it actually became lodged inside of the tooth itself so I couldn't actually swap it out for another tooth. Definitely gonna have to get some stronger material for the bolts for next time because that's not a problem I wanna have to deal with again. My second fight with Demon's Mom was against 
a D2 kit named Buffy. And I can't really comment much on this fight, except to say that Demon Spawn does the thing. And that really sucks. Especially when it happens two seconds into the match. So, with two losses under my belt, I did enter Demon Spawn in the Beetleweight Rumble, which I was pretty excited about because it was kind of some of the spinners I really wanted to face in that match. Unfortunately, before I can get to any of those spinners, Demon Spawn got scooped up by Hailstone and thrown into the wall. I actually broke off the Lexan protective coating on the wall. Sorry, Chuck. I was then able to spin back up and I went head to head with Project Terminus which was one of the robots I was really interested in seeing function. He was having some issues over the weekend as well. But we both hit each other and both went flying in opposite directions. After that, my antenna kind of popped out of the front of the robot and I was kind of dragging it around so I couldn't seem to drive forward effectively. I could go backwards, but... With the weapon spinning, that becomes even a bigger problem. And then eventually, somewhere along the line, Revenge of the Clux was able to get underneath Demon Spawn, and it didn't seem to do much damage. It seems like it just ground on the bottom of it, but it tweaked it enough so that the weapon would no longer spin, and I just kind of sat there twitching in the corner for the rest of the rumble. The robot was working for the entire rumble, but I really had very little mobility. I can kind of move forward and back in one spot, but I couldn't really translate across the arena effectively. So I wasn't able to get into any more of the battle. I was kind of hoping that maybe I could like sever off the antenna and still have enough signal to continue maybe driving a bit and at least participating, but that wasn't the case. So in damage from the rumble, you can see the tooth here, the one that actually has all the damage to it. The other tooth's pretty much fine, but it does have a nice little bend to it, courtesy, I believe, of Project Terminus, which definitely shows that that robot's hitting very, very hard. I wasn't able to fix that bolt on it, so that didn't really help either. Now it's kind of jammed in this awkward position. The entire frame actually flexed. You can see it doesn't really sit very flat, and it's hard to turn the weapon, so it actually needs to be basically unbent so that it will move freely. Let's see, I haven't looked at the bottom. I think I did this when I was trying to fix it, but that could also be from Revenge of the Clux. I'm not entirely sure what it did here on the bottom, but I know it did hit me enough that it helped warp the frame. But not a whole lot of damage, to be quite honest. Really, just I have to figure out the weapon to make it a little more robust. And I already picked up a new base plate material. This is supposed to be 6061 aluminum, but it's very flexible. I can't even really show it right now, but it's not as sturdy as 6061 I've used in the past, so I don't know if I got the wrong grade, either before or now, but either way, it doesn't hold up the way it's supposed to hold up. So I have a new titanium base plate that's going in this bot that will hopefully make it a little more structural stable and keep it from bending. Last but not least, I have my hockey bot F13. This was a case where I got a bunch of parts in. I just built the frame out of wood because it is hockey, so there's very little chance of it getting very destroyed. So I just kind of went the cheap and easy route with this. And I can't really comment much on specifics with bot hockey because it's just pure chaos. I do have the individual videos of my three matches here on the YouTube channel, including the second one against Team V where I had POV from the GoPro strapped to the top of the bot along with my transmitter video so that was pretty cool i was competing with team ice and halfway through the first two rounds and then for all of the third round i ended up using one of their bots instead of this one just because it drove a little better i was played by some wiring issues in this one so it would work fine when it was working but every so often it would lose a side of drive and then it would come back and that seemed just like bad connections or something that team ice bot i don't know if it had a name or anything but it was really fun to drive it's using some of the bane bots motors and it had four wheel drive and it could just kind of like drift around the arena f13 i think i also either put in the set screws into the motor clutches either too tight or too loose so it made this horrible grinding noise the whole time which was actually amplified also by the shape of the frame making it just ridiculously loud and disgusting sounding probably not good for the motors but it was kind of funny but we did actually manage to take first place in bot hockey i was pretty surprised honestly i was having so much fun playing that i didn't really pay attention to the scores at all so i had no clue that we were actually doing well i just knew i was having fun but we managed to take first place so that was kind of nice after not doing so well in combat to at least have something cool to take away from hockey and bot hockey is definitely something i hope catches on at other events because it's so much damn fun and so much ridiculous chaos i know it requires a lot more room in a completely separate arena but it is worth it so that was clash of the bots 2017 it's an event that's kind of out of the way for me it's about a six hour drive for me to get from jacksonville florida up to charlotte north carolina or gastonia north carolina where it's held but it is so worth it this event actually filled up 
in registration very early. So I think everybody knows by this point what a great event it is. I'm also impressed with how well run it is. It's held at a natural history museum up there, which is a great venue. It's done in conjunction, I guess, with some kind of museum science day or something like that. So there's tons of people, tons of kids. There was always an audience watching. The audience is actually roped off in such a way that it gives the competitors plenty of room to both work and view the fights, which is not a luxury we always get at robot events, so it's one that I'm always very happy to have when I could get it. And despite the fact that my combat robots didn't do so hot, it was well worth the trip. And it's always cool to go and travel and compete against people you don't always compete against. So I have a few weeks to get these robots rebuilt and back up and running before I head down to Fort Lauderdale for Florida Supercon. Going to be a very interesting two-day event held in conjunction with the Florida Supercon convention. So not only can I fight robots, but I can go meet the actor who played Candyman. And I feel like after that, I already have the rest of my year planned out for robot combat. Because Dragon Con's coming up in September, about a month after I finish Supercon. And I'm planning to head out to Colorado for the Spark Fun AVC to do some combat out there. So I've got plenty of work to get to, so I'm going to wrap this video up, and I'll see you at the next event report.